Greetings, nerdlings, and welcome to Amalgam Nation Presents World of Lawcraft, Herocraft, and the Lothar edition. This is interesting because there are two different Ando and Lothar lore sections. We have actually lore pages, I should say. We have the movie and we have the game. I'm going to start off with the movie because that will be where most people know uh, Ando and Lothar from. The movie version of Ando and Lothar. In the movie, Anduin Lothar is shown as King Leanne's brother-in-law, brother to the Queen, Lady Taria, and uncle to the future King Varian Rin. He has a son, Callan, who is a soldier in the Stormwind army. As in the games, Lothar is commander of Stormwind's military, and he personally leads a group of soldiers to investigate rumours of invading orcs. It is on this expedition that he encounters Khadgar, a young Kirin Tor mage. Khadgar convinces Lothar that the dead humans have traces of fell magic, as well as capturing an orc spy named Garona. Lothar returns Garona to Stormwind. After Garona is convinced to help the humans, Lothar leads a scouting party to find the main orc camp. While there, he is met by the orc Durotan and returns to King Leanne with Durotan's invitation of a meeting. When the meeting is ambushed, Lothar valiantly leads his small force in defending the king, but is devastated when Callan gets trapped on the wrong side of Medivh's magical barrier. A heartbroken Lothar is then forced to watch as Blackhand murders his son. After returning to Stormwind, Lothar becomes lost in grief for his son, but finds some small comfort in his mutual attraction to Garona. He strongly urges the king not to attack the orc forces at the Dark Portal, feeling that the battle is a trap and could prove devastating for Stormwind. Believing Lothar to be consumed by his grief, King Lian orders him placed in a cell until he can calm down. Khadgar, however, breaks him out and requests his help with Medivh, whom he now knows is possessed by a demon. Lothar agrees and the two teleport to Karzan. After taking care of Medivh's golem construct and purging the mage of the demon, Lothar learns that Gul'dan indeed planned a trap for the humans and quickly mounts a griffin to help the king. Upon arriving, he finds that the Stormwind forces are being overrun and that King Lian has been killed by Garona. Wishing to bury his king, Lothar challenges the fell-enhanced Blackhand to single combat. When Blackhand agrees, he is shocked when the small human kills him in single, a single move. The other orcs at Garona's urging allow Lothar to leave with Leanne's body despite Gul'dan's wishes. At the funeral of King Lian, Lothar stands with his sister and nephew before the gathered forces of humans, dwarves and elves. Placed in charge of the new alliance to fight the orcs, Lothar raises his sword to the sky and shouts a rallying cry, For Azeroth! Game Lore Lothar grew up in the court of Azeroth as a childhood friend of both the Prince Lian Rin and Medivh. The trio shared many adventures in the Azerotian wilderness in their youth. Upon coming of age, Lothar joined Stormwind's military, was later knighted and rose quickly to the position of armsman of the Brotherhood of the Horse, eventually becoming the leader of Stormwind's armies. When the orcs first arrived in Azeroth and launched their initial attack on Stormwind Keep, Lothar aggressively advocated taking the battle to them. King Adamant Wren III shared Lothar's view and therefore pledged to rid his beloved land of the orcs. He died before that pledge could ever be fulfilled and was succeeded by his son Lian Wren I. The new king continued his father's work and the battles against the orcs raged on. During this time the invaders were held back to the Swamp of Sorrows. At one point during the war, the Tome of Divinity, a book of great value to the clerics of Northshire, was stolen by a rogue band of ogres led by the ogre lord Turok. Lothar led an expedition into the ogres' hideout, the dead mines in Westfall, but they were completely overrun and held captive to be slowly killed. Lothar remained imprisoned within the caves for 20 months before he and his few surviving men were saved by Azerotian troops. He retrieved the Tome of Divinity and returned to Stormwind, safeguarding the book at Northshire Abbey. Reintroduced to the war, Lothar continued leading the forces of Stormwind. Lothar was shocked when the wizard Khadgar, the apprentice to his old friend Medivh, arrived to tell him that the great mage had betrayed everyone by summoning the orcs into Azeroth. After a heated discussion in Stormwind, Lothar personally led a force to storm Karzan to kill Medivh. 
The band of troops, along with Lothar, Khadgar, and the half-orc Garona, descended into the lower tower and confronted the Mad Guardian. Khadgar managed to stab Medivh in the heart, and Lothar removed his head with one swipe from his great sword. Unfortunately, the death of Medivh could not stop the rampage of the Horde. The war was starting to turn against Azeroth as the orcs learned from their earlier mistakes under the leadership of Warchief Blackhand. King Leanne was assassinated by the Horde's spy-mistress, Garona, and the city of Stormwind was sacked. Lothar, knowing that the kingdom of Azeroth had been lost, decided to save what remained of his people. He gathered the tattered remnants of the army and as many civilians as he could and led them in a desperate retreat across the Great Sea, eventually landing upon the shores of Lordaeron. Once at the court of King Terenus Menethil II of Lordaeron, Lothar told his dire story to everyone who would listen. Lothar's eloquent pleas ultimately brought the human kingdoms together for an emergency council, where his friend Terenus' masterful politics created the alliance of Lordaeron. Having been contacted by Terenus with Lothar's tale, the normally aloof High Elves sent a contingent of their forces, knowing they could finally pay off their debt to the Arathi bloodline for saving them during the Troll Wars. The Wildhammer Dwarfs at very peak were attacked by the Horde as well, and quickly pledged themselves to Lothar. The Alliance was later joined by the Bronzebeard Dwarves and Gnomes of Kazmodan, who had been forced out of much of their lands by the Horde's advance. Because of his great skill in warfare, experience with Orcs, and because the Kings of the North were not comfortable placing their troops in the command of a rival nation, Lothar, a neutral party, was named the Supreme Commander of the Alliance forces. He quickly named Teralion his second in command, and Admiral Dalen Proudmoor, Uther the Lightbringer, and Archmage Khadgar as his lieutenants. Throughout the war, he led his forces from battle to battle with valor and skill. After the Horde's mysterious retreat from Lordaeron and Grand Admiral Proudmoor's victories at sea, Lothar led the armies of the Alliance to liberate much of Azeroth and Kazmodan, meeting up with Muradin and Bran Bronzebeard eventually breaching the Black Morass itself. Lothar was killed at the foot of Blackrock Mountain after a force of Alliance troops he personally commanded was ambushed by the Horde. He became separated from the main body of his troops in what is perhaps the greatest battle in Azeroth's history. Amid the chaos, he was forced into combat with Orgrim Doomhammer, war chief of the Horde. After a long and draining fight, Lothar was defeated in single combat after his sword was shattered by the Doomhammer his skull crushed by a powerful blow from the legendary weapon. Some believe that Orgrim did not win fairly and Lothar was killed after being ambushed by a group of Horde's warriors. Regardless, his blade fell from his dead grasp, though it did not lie for long. Doomhammer believed that Lothar's death would break the fighting spirit of his forces, but what happened was quite the opposite. After Lothar's death, his most trusted general, Teralion, took up his shield and sword and led the armies of the Alliance to eventual victory over the Blackrock Spire's defences. This allowed Lothar's old ally and friend, Khadgar, to later destroy the Dark Portal. Lothar's Legacy A massive stone statue depicting Lothar in his last charge was built by Orcish prisoners of the Alliance and still stands in the Burning Steeps, pointing defiantly towards Blackrock Spire. Lord Lothar's legacy lives on in all of the free peoples of Stormwind. Anduin Wren, who became King of Stormwind, bears Lothar's name. The Alliance expedition to Draenor, led by veterans who had fought alongside Lothar in Second War, named themselves the Sons of Lothar in honour of the greatest, most selfless man we ever knew. As Khadgar relates it, the moment of remembrance in Honor Hold was also built as a memorial to everything he fought for. A belt that had once belonged to Lothar came into the possession of the Crimson Ring, a group of slavers and gladiators in Orgrimmar, and was kept in their special armory in the Hall of Legends. The belt was claimed by Varian Ren, then known as the Gladiator Logosh, when he was allowed access to that armory. At some point Lothar returned to Stormwind for a brief stay and received the gift of a rifle from a dwarven gunsmith. He lost it later, presumably when he was returning to his forces during the First War. Lothar's Personality Lothar was a strong and highly charismatic leader, capable of commanding attention and radiating determination and conviction to those serving under him. 
Though most often appearing emotionless, he was deeply passionate about his friends and countrymen. His loyalty was first and foremost to the people of Azeroth, fighting with the full extent of his considerable skills in battle in hopes his homeland would be reclaimed. In combat, Lothar fought best as part of the cavalry, charging into his enemies with Kel Zoran. He preferred to outmaneuver enemy commanders, retreating when prudent. He was at his most useful when commanding others. Following Medivh's betrayal, Lothar developed a profound respect for the power spellcasters commanded, targeting them first in battle by hammering through lesser warriors to reach them. Weapons of Lothar Kelzaram was one of Lothar's great swords. He discovered while on his youthful adventures with Lian Rin and Medivh. The sword impressed Medivh and he dubbed it Kelzaram, Thalassian for Highblade. Lothar also wielded the great royal sword of Stormwind. It was shattered during the Second War but later taken up by Thralian. The whereabouts of both weapons are unknown. Ash Candy I'm not sure how to pronounce that one actually. It's spelt A S H K A N D I. I'm going to call it Ashkandi because it's easy for me to pronounce it that way. In World of Warcraft, Ashkandi, Great Sword of the Brotherhood, can be obtained when slaying the Faryan Lord of Blackrock. This is also believed to be a sword of Lothar's, as Brotherhood is assumed to refer to Lothar's Order, Brotherhood of the Horse. The hilt is inscribed with the initials A L, assumed to mean Anduin Lothar. However, judging by its looks, the sword has most likely been altered by Nefarian from its original appearance. Surprisingly, when this weapon was given a description in the Monster Guide, no connection to Anduin Lothar was made. In Warcraft 2 In the actual Warcraft 2 game events of Assault on Blackrock Spire, Lothar was lured into a trap while attempting to parlay with the orcs at Blackrock Spire. The player was sent to siege Blackrock Spire, assuming the worst had happened to Lothar as they had heard nothing from him in days. Seconds after the level begins, Lothar and his troops are slaughtered by a large group of ogres and trolls, and there is nothing the player can do to save him. Thank you for watching, and as always, remember... Play to game and game to play.